Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make these paracord grab handles or oh shit handles as some people call them. Um, they're pretty easy to make. You just got to follow the steps, um, you know, precisely with the paracord lengths, the webbing lengths. You might have, you might have some experimenting to do with those different lengths just so you get it just right. Um, and I'll show you all that. But, uh, you know, aside from the basic materials of the webbing and the paracord and the hardware for the bolts and washers and rubber washers so you don't damage your paint, um, you're going to need some specialty tools like, you know, a grommet punch and a grommet die. I'll have, you know, those links uh, listed below. Um, I'll have the bolt sizes, washer sizes all listed below as well. And, um, yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, I like this option better than the, you know, options that go over the bar. The reason why I like this is because it's in a fixed spot. The ones that go over the bar, you know, tend to slide, which some people like. They, that'll, they can slide it up and out of their way. Um, but I also noticed that they do, uh, you know, sag down quite a bit versus, you know, this option. Um, when you make this, uh, I just got done making this one. It's gonna be pretty tight to the handle. You can see I have about a half inch clearance above my hand, which is, I think is just about perfect. Um, if you wanna make it, you know, sag a little bit more, just make the webbing longer. Um, and if you want it tighter, of course, just make it tighter. Although I wouldn't go much tighter than this because then you're gonna have trouble putting it on the bolts. Um, so there's that. And also with it being bolted on, there's, you know, the benefit of, you know, this being in a fixed location, you know it's gonna be there, you know, so will your passenger. And um, last little note is I do not know if this will work on uh, Wranglers that have soft tops because the soft tops come with uh, the, you know, some hardware for this where I'm bolting into. And I, I don't have a soft top, so I can't test that to see if it would work. So if anyone has a soft top and they try this, please let me know if it works. Please let me know if there's a workaround for it. Maybe you can use the existing bolts on the soft top, you know, instead of purchasing these. Um, but, you know, either way, I would be curious to know. I'm sure uh, if other people are making this, they'd want to know too, just in case they have that option. But standard Jeeps with, you know, just a hard top, this will work for the JLs. Um, but yeah, aside from that, we'll get started on the install. Okay, so to start this off, you're going to want to get your uh, one-inch webbing. Um, this stuff that I bought, I realized I got it, and it's kind of cheap material. Like, it's very thin uh, compared to the first uh, webbing that I had used. The webbing that I had used at first was actually some Thule, um, you know, straps that, you know, came with one of my roof racks. And it was, you know, it's a very good, you know, dense uh, webbing material. You can kind of see the difference between the two. You can see how the blue Thule one's almost like twice the thickness. So um, with that, I had originally measured this one out before I cut the webbing to 14 and a half inches, but since this one's a little bit thinner, I'm gonna double it up and um, probably cut them both at 15 inches. Uh, so I'll show you that. And then uh, if you have one of these little jigs, this is even better because as you uh, wrap the webbing it'll start to you know shorten the length and you want those to come out to 14 and a half inches um, you know end to end and uh, like end to end not eyelet to eyelet and um, when it shrinks like that you know you're kind of SOL that you know trial and error trial and error I did you know I've done a bunch of these because you got to get the length length right and I had originally measured this one out and didn't use a jig and it really shortened up on me so it's just even more helpful to have one of these because you can set it and then just start, you know, wrapping. You know it's going to come out at that uh, proper length. So, um, and this one also was because I only used, you know, one strand of this cheap webbing. Um, so I'm going to double it up like I did on this one. And you can see that I used two. Um, really bad job with that eyelet. But uh, I also left some... Uh, paracord running down the middle of this just to give it some extra you know girth um and because this is really thin in your hand this is, feels a little bit better <clears throat> so i'll show you how to do that but uh like i said first off let's start by just measuring out and cutting this to uh 15 inches i'm going to cut since this is really thin um you know four lengths of this at 15 inches all right so i cut these uh four lengths and um, like I said, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to double them up. 
Uh, once you cut them, you're gonna have to singe them uh, with a lighter, um, you know, anyways. Um, but if you are doubling it up, just singe them together and, you know, press them together. I use a, you know, a butane lighter just because it has a more, uh, you know, even heat and uh, you really don't have to hold on there longer as long as like a Bic lighter. And, you know, I put it in a little Zippo container so it's easy to just press against to uh, seal everything. So you're gonna wanna do that. Um, and just get two strands for your passenger side and your driver's side. And again, if you're doubling up, cut four and singe them together. All right, so now we're gonna use our grommet tool to punch a hole and then insert the grommet in the webbing. Um, this is one of the specialty tools I was talking about. You can buy this all as like one little kit, you know, on Amazon. It comes with the, the punch and then the die handle and the die um, base. So what you're gonna do is use your punch Mine's pretty worn out, so this might take a little bit, but uh, place it about three millimeters or three webbing lengths away from the end, just because you want enough room for your grommet to, uh, you know, clear and everything. Probably right about there, make sure you center it. Give it a couple whacks with the hammer. And you can start to kind of move the punch around just to make sure if it is worn out, you can really get all the way through. And you can see it only got part of the way through on mine, but you know, that's really enough. I can use my scissors to clean that up. But once you have your hole punched, use your lighter and just clean up the inside of it. I'm not sure if everyone does this. I just do it just because it makes a nice, clean border for that grommet. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use your die kit. You're gonna place that male end of the grommet through the hole of your webbing, just like that. And then you're gonna place that end on the base of this die base like this. And you can do this right on the concrete. Use your punch on a when you're using your punch, make sure you're placing on a piece of wood so that way you can, you know, cut all the way through. But with the die, you can just do it right on the concrete. Take one of these little washer ends, put it on the die handle, put it all through, and just give it a couple good whacks with the hammer. All right, and just like that, you have your grommet installed. Now we're gonna do the other side and um, as well as both ends on this other strip for the passenger side. All right, now you're gonna wanna measure out, um, if you're using two colors, uh, nine feet of each color in paracord, uh, or uh, if you're using a single color, just you know measure out 18 um, complete uh, feet of that paracord. So um, I'm gonna measure out nine feet of the red and nine feet of uh, the black. Um, actually, I'll probably do 10 feet, you know, just to play it safe, you don't wanna end up wrapping the whole thing and then run out of paracord. Uh, so, and also I wanna show you, you know, a great, you know, provider of paracord on Amazon is Paracord Planet. I buy a bunch of stuff from them. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this isn't a plug for Paracord Planet. Um, I just found that, you know, they make good quality uh, paracord, um, you know, cause I've come across some that, you know, I bought from like Lowe's or Home Depot that really isn't the best quality and they have a ton of, you know, color options. You can also purchase it, purchase it in these smaller sizes or like huge spools, which is uh, pretty cool. So yeah, we'll start by cutting uh, 10 feet of each paracord color. Okay, so now we're gonna start by just uh, splicing, fusing really these two uh, paracord ends together. Just take your lighter and heat them up. I like to do them, you know, at the same time, just so they both get the equal amount of burn just kind of let them sit together you can blow on it kind of pinch them together if you can you know just so it fuses and this isn't gonna be like a load-bearing little fuse I mean it, it'll be wrapped up inside of it so the wrappings will be so tight that it doesn't matter you know how how tight this is you just want to be melted together really so now what we're gonna start with is I'm gonna run two strands down the middle of this just to give it a little extra width. 
you don't need to do this. Um, I'll show you how to start this without um, you know doing that if you so choose. Basically, you're gonna wanna you know take one end. I'm gonna take the red end and you know leave a couple extra inches uh, you know to the side, and then just tie an overhand knot. So your overhand knot will look like that. This is how you start, you know, this uh, without running these two ends down through it. Now, once you do the overhand, you basically just take one end, stays on top, this end goes around it, down behind, and then through this hole right there. Pull the slack through, and you just keep repeating that. And you can start to cinch this down pretty tight if you want. Whatever color is on top, whatever strand is on top, always stays on top. So the red went this way, now it's coming back around this way, goes underneath, the black goes around it, behind and back through. It just keeps snaking its way down. Now, like I said, I'm gonna actually leave uh, two strands running through this the whole way. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, so there's my, um, webbing. I'm going to take this, leave a couple inches like that, and I'm going to lay it down to just about an inch before that eyelet. And these are going to run all the way down and across to the other eyelet, like that. Pinch it at the top. You're going to take it, and you're going to put these ends around and tie your overhand knot on that back side, keeping that pinched, tighten down your overhand knot on this side, and then you're gonna start that uh, weaving that I showed you just earlier. Since this side I'm gonna want uh, facing you know, up when it's installed in my vehicle, because this is like, you know, the innards and everything, well, you can kind of see it through. I want this part facing down, so that way, you know, whatever I see is just clean. Um, and I want my color on the bottom to be black. So I'm gonna start with the red on the top, if that made any sense, and just go across the top, just like I showed you previously. Black goes around and behind and through the hole. Pull it through. And then you can start to work this tight. I don't know if this is the best way, honestly, um, to tighten this. This is just the way I do it. I mean, you know, the, the way to wrap this, this is just the way I do it. But any of these steps now I'm about to show you, that works pretty well, you can see it like that. On that back side, it's just the overhand knot. And now you're gonna start this like you would any, you know, paracord wrapping, like a bracelet or something. Like I showed you earlier, red color is gonna stay in the front. Black's gonna go behind. Pulls through that loop for the red. Cinch it down and just repeat. Red stays in the front. Just like that. And I'm gonna use, you don't need one of these tools, but I'm gonna use it so that way it absolutely will come out to the length I want it to. So I'm gonna set this exactly where I want it. So it'll come out to uh, 14 and a half inches once it's all said and done. All right, and then you're just gonna Keep wrapping. Making it tight on each wrap. One thing I wanna show you is that as you start to do this, the webbing will start to kind of curl in or you know pinch in a weird way. Try to get it so it curls in. That way it's like kind of, you know, when you're tightening it down, it's going over those, you know, uh, two strands through here. Makes it a little bit, you know, thicker, just cleaner and everything. I mean, if not, it's not a, you know, a big deal. It'll look fine either way. 
And you can see right now that this is pretty loose. You can see this is pretty loose on this tool. Um, as you get down to the end, and I'll show you when I get to the end, it'll be pretty snug. It shows you how much it uh, shortens as you, as you wrap. All right, you can see that I'm getting pretty close to the end of that uh, paracord that I had running down the middle of this. Uh, you absolutely, again, do not have to do this step. Uh, it's just something I like to do um, where I feed the paracord through the very end of that gap just so it secures it in place and keeps it from running through, not like it would. But uh, to do that, you take this little tool right here, you heat up the end of this and make it a point. Make this end as pointy as possible. Again, be careful as you know you're doing this, you don't burn yourself. And then you basically just put it on and kind of screw it on and it'll catch and it'll be a part of the tool and it's not going anywhere. So now once you have it on, you can take it and put it through the very end of that paracord like that, pull it through leave a little bit of loop right there because what you'll do like you have been doing is wrapping like normal putting the black end through the back around the back and through the hole and tighten it down and then once you're done you can just take it off by twisting again do not cut it because then it'll be stuck in there set it to the side and then you can keep going with this as you can see this is pretty tight to the tool now. It's shrunk enough to where um, it's pretty snug with this, which is exactly what we wanted because it's gonna be the length we want it. So now you're just gonna keep wrapping until you get close to the end of that last eyelet. You do not want this to be on top of that eyelet because uh, it'll be in the way of the washer. Just get it um, about you know three or four millimeters away from the eyelet. I stop about right there, like this end is right there. It's probably pretty close, closer than it needs to be. And you'll see why when we're uh, installing it. So pull everything tight. You can take it off the uh, this little jig if you were using it. You can see how much slack was left. This is about, I don't know, three or four feet of slack. So I used 10 feet on each. You could probably get away with nine like originally said, maybe eight feet, if that's all you have of paracord. You're gonna take these ends and you're just gonna use your scissors, cut them off. Pretty close, you wanna cut it off pretty close to the um, where it's coming out of, um, but you do want enough in there so that way you can use your butane lighter to seal, seal it down. So just, Use your butane lighter to get the ends of that pretty hot and then press into it so that way it molds into that hole and won't come out. Do the same on the other side. Now that's not going anywhere. So that is one completely done. Um, when you're putting your eyelets on, make sure that you put both ends, um, you know, clean edges on the same side and the non-clean edges on the same side, just so aesthetically it looks good. Um, this will be the side that'll be facing down, so my hand will grab it like this. Um, you can kind of see what I mean by how, you know, much cleaner this side is than this side, because you can kind of see the red and black running through where I had it. Um, some of the knots, uh, you know, where we spliced it, sometimes you'll be able to see that on this side, uh, and especially, right here where we pass the paracord through. So this is just the un, kind of unclean side and this is the much cleaner side that you'll have facing down that you'll be seeing. But yeah, so we'll get, uh, we'll do the other side, the passenger side, and um, then we'll get started on the hardware. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at some of the hardware that you'll need to uh, get this installed. If you have, I realize that, you know, I have a hard top, so this will, you know, work. Uh, no matter what, um, but I realized if you have a soft top, 
um, there's actually you know components in the soft top on the bar that get in the way of this. You might be able to still make it work by feeding um, you know the existing bolt in your soft top through this portion, but um, I can't really show you that or test it to see if it'd work because I don't have a soft top. So we're gonna roll with um, you know this. This should be the setup that most people will be rocking with their Jeeps if they just have a hard top. So uh, this is the basic hardware. Uh, this is what you'll need for just one end. So you're, whatever this is, you're gonna wanna get um, four times of each piece. So basically to start off, you'll take your uh, two and a half inch bolt, your three eighth um, bolt, that's two and a half inches long, and you'll first put down this one and a half inch uh, metal washer, that's also three eighths. And then um, just, you know, a thin uh, rubber spacer, um, you know, just so that way this doesn't mar up your paint uh, on that rail. This one I think was designed for like a quarter inch uh, or, you know, a quarter inch uh, bolt, but it was just thin enough to uh, work on this. If you can find a thin three eighths, I would recommend using that. So just put that over. So now it's gonna look like that. And then what you'll do is you'll put this through the, and I'll show you all this, but you'll put this through the top bar rail of your vehicle. So once it's all the way through, you'll put down your uh, rubber washer spacer, you know, gasket type thing um, just on this end to again, protect the paint. You wanna make sure it's again, three eighths if you can find one in that size. And then you'll put down your metal washer and then you'll put down your uh, you know, put it through the grommet of your handle and then you put down your other washer. So it kind of sandwiches it like that. And then you'll put on your, and that's a, again, this is all three eighths inch uh, hardware. Um, but this is a one inch, um, you know, diameter, uh, metal washer. And then you're going to put your three eighths inch, um, bolt on there and just tighten everything down and it'll sit like that. The bar will be, you know, kind of like right through there. So everything should just sync up just like that. Um, and you'll do that on, like I said, both sides of this. So then your handle will be complete. And then on the other side of the vehicle. So all these components, you can just go to the hardware store and just make sure that everything fits together. You know, might as well just bring, you know, your handle in with you and uh, test it out. And then that way you can go right out to your car and test it and see if it uh, fits on. So we'll get started to installing this on the vehicle. One thing I wanted to mention that uh, before you get started on installing this, just make sure you pop your freedom panel up, support it with something, and just wedge something in between there just or remove it completely so you have easy access to putting these on. All right, so now we're gonna put the uh, bolts through the rail. You can see I already did one here. Um, it's these holes right here, not these ones. I've tried putting a handle on these ones and it just doesn't work. They're, you know, just like, you know, little metal screws uh, into this and you don't want them to pull out. So go ahead and slide on your one and a half inch metal washer and your rubber um, spacer, the washer, and slide that through. Now you can take your smaller rubber washer and put that through. I'm trying to do this all one-handed so it's kind of tough. All right. Take a metal washer and put that through and then place your handle through that and then I might have to do this off camera real quick, but I'm gonna put the other metal washer down and then fasten it with the nut. So like I said, once you have your handle on, then put that other washer on, the small one, and then, uh, you know, thumb tighten it down with the nut. And then you're gonna come in here with a 14 millimeter socket. And of course, hold another wrench on top of that to keep it steady and just fasten it in place. And then do that on the other side as well. And you'll have your grab handles ready to go. 
All right, so tighten this side down. You can see that it just perfectly clears the end of the bolt right there with the nut, how everything fits on. Um, I don't use a locking wash uh, nut because then it would be protruding too far down. I would need a longer bolt. Um, and I don't use a spring washer. Uh, I probably would, but you really don't need it. Um, I've had my other pair on for about six months now and they were on there solid. If you just kind of do them snug, don't over tighten them because then you'll damage the grommet. You might damage your frame. Um, but yeah, like I said, do that on both sides. You'd be good to go. All right. And now I've tightened down this side as well. So it's all on there. You can see that this is pretty tight. You can barely set your fingers through there, but watch as you use it, it'll have the perfect amount of gapping for your hand. And then just over time, it will start to sag a little bit more, maybe like half an inch further down. But this is a pretty tight, sleek look.